Hey what is up guys, welcome back to another Minecraft Java video. Today we're going to take a look at the best Optifine settings for Minecraft Java Edition version 1.18.1. These are actually going to be the best Optifine performance settings. I have done a video previously on the best Optifine settings and I've gone through each of the different settings to try and give yourselves more FPS inside your game. So today we're going to look at the performance settings in particular and we're going to try and see if we can actually get a performance boost and an FPS increase inside our Minecraft game using those particular performance settings. As you guys can see I am using Optifine version HD H4 Ultra. This is the latest current version of Optifine for 1.18.1 that is stable. I'm not actually using any of the preview versions. I am using the standard version that is available. So as you guys can see I do have Optifine installed and the main section that we are going to look at today is this section over here which is performance so if I go into the performance section you can see that we have different settings here that we can enable and disable to try and give ourselves more FPS inside our game so first of all let me go ahead and actually reset all of my settings so I'm going to actually go ahead and reset my video settings so let me go ahead and do that now all right, so the video settings have been reset. So let me go ahead and change the auto save to 12 minutes and turn off the GL errors over here. I'm also gonna enable the FPS counter using the show FPS function. Let me go back and now let me start to change a few settings. The first setting I'm gonna change is the render distance. So I'm gonna actually change this to 32 chunks. Now Optifine does allow me to change it to 64 chunks, but because Sodium and other mods and the default vanilla game only goes up to 32 chunks I'm actually going to keep it on 32 chunks just so we can be consistent with the vanilla game and some of the other mods like sodium and canvas renderer let me go ahead and increase the simulation distance to 32 as well I'm also going to change the brightness to bright and then I'm going to go into the detail section and change the entity distance to 500 and the biome blend to 15 by 15 which is the maximum we are basically going to try and stress our system out to see what average FPS I can get and then and I'm going to use the performance settings and try and see if I can get further FPS boosts inside my game on version 1.18.1. Let's go one level back. I'm also going to change the FOV to a Quake Pro because the higher the FOV, the less FPS we do receive inside our game. I have done several tests and I can confirm that if you'd use a lower FOV, for example, if, if I was using a FOV of 60, I would get more FPS compared to if I was using an FOV of 90. So let's go ahead and change that all the way to Quake Pro. All right, now let's have a look at what kind of FPS I am getting inside my game. Let me just go into first person mode here. As you guys can see, it is actually hovering somewhere between 40 to 60 FPS. It is a bit jerky as well. I am using this on 32 render distance chunks. So obviously we can expect to see some slowdowns as well. So as you guys can see, on average, it is fluctuating between 40 to 60 FPS. Now let's go ahead and actually have a look at the performance performance setting. I'm going to go into video settings and click on performance and the main setting which I have noticed that does give me a nice boost is this one over here which is called render regions. So let's hover over this and read up about the render region settings. As you guys can see it says allows faster terrain rendering by optimizing the GPU load. More effective at higher render distances not recommended for integrated graphics cards. So any of you who are using laptops with integrated graphics cards this might not work for you so do bear that in mind all right so let me go ahead and enable this now now as you guys can see on the top left corner there my fps has actually jumped up to 100 fps and now it is going to fluctuate somewhere between 60 to 100 fps as you guys can see i'm just moving around here and it's probably not the best example or best test to test out the fps fluctuations here in this particular area however we can see that I am getting much higher FPS than what I was getting previously so this setting definitely does help us inside our Minecraft game so all I've done is I've gone into the options clicked on video settings gone into the performance settings and enabled the render regions setting over here obviously if you guys are not able to get any performance boost with this and it's not working for you some of the other settings that I would recommend that you guys do enable are as follows so first of all you need to go ahead and enable the fast render setting so as you guys can see it says 
uses optimized rendering algorithm, which decreases the CPU load and may substantially increase the FPS. So let's go ahead and enable this. Let's have a look at fast math as well. As you guys can see, it says uses optimized sin and cost functions, which can better utilize the CPU cache and increase the FPS. So let's go ahead and enable this as well. I'm not going to actually enable smooth weld because I don't actually want to stabilize my FPS at the moment. And the same thing for smooth FPS as well. So if you guys want to stabilize your FPS, if you guys are getting severe lag spikes where it's going really high and then really low, then go ahead and enable smooth FPS and smooth weld. But for this test, I'm going to leave them set to off. Let's go ahead and enable the dynamic updates as well. So as you guys can see, this says dynamic updates force more chunk updates while the player is standing still to load the world faster. So you can go ahead and enable this as well. In my personal tests, I have not actually noticed much of a difference between enabling this or disabling this, but you can go ahead and enable that as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at lazy chunk loading. Now, as you guys can see, it says smooths the integrated server chunk loading by distributing the chunks over several ticks. Turn it off if parts of the world do not load correctly. Effective only for local worlds, single player. So let's go ahead and enable this as well. I'm also going to enable the smart animations. So as you guys can see, it says with smart animations, the game will only animate the textures which are currently visible on the screen. This reduces the tick lag spikes and increases the FPS. So let's go ahead and enable the smart animations option over here. So as you guys can see, my game is much more smoother now and I am getting more FPS than I was getting with those performance options turned off. So if you guys are looking to further increase your FPS and your performance, performance in your Minecraft game by using Optifine on version 1.18.1 then do go ahead and turn the settings on and have a look if it does actually improve your performance and give you a better FPS boost inside your game. For my current hardware and setup it does actually improve my FPS inside my game and does give me much better performance compared to if I was using the default Optifine settings. Hopefully this is going to sort out your issues with Optifine and hopefully these best Optifine performance settings for Minecraft Java 1.18.1. If you guys found the video useful, please do give us a like. If you have any comments or queries about any of the best Optifine performance settings, then do leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to try and help you guys out. Please also do subscribe to this channel to help support it, help it grow, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.